When I say journey, I mean the responsibility of cleansing the long accumulated hilly garbages. Meditation does this job. That too we have to select the right meditation. Wrong meditation is also going on in the world. Some people are teaching wrong meditation. Actually, they are not meditation. They use the name meditation, but they teach contemplation <laughs> in the name of meditation. Contemplation can't be meditation. One step behind. Some people teach concentration, they call it is meditation. Again, it's the wrong approach. Concentration and contemplation are just below the level of meditation. Maybe a preparation for meditation, concentration and contemplation. But there is a danger also. If a person is habituated to concentrate on certain things for long, long years, there is a chance of clinging to concentration, unable to move from there, a kind of addiction is also possible. That's a danger. So one must know the knack how to concentrate. One must know the thorough knowledge how to contemplate. Then these people will transcend from concentration and contemplation into meditation. The purpose is not stay there forever. The purpose of concentration and contemplation is to transcend that state into meditation state. It's a promotion. <laughs> not stagnation. I've seen people right from the childhood they start concentrating on something. After 30 years, 40 years, they are doing the same old thing. <laughs> it is stagnation, retardation. It is not meditation. Also contemplation, the same situation. A kind of addiction happens. Both in concentration and contemplation, Addiction possibilities are there, addicted to. One has to transcend the object upon which the concentration was made. I remember an incident in a Zen monk place. There were some Zen people meditating in a group In a monastery, one day, a climate of this kind, very chilly climate, cold climate, one of the meditators started burning the wooden image of Gautam Buddha, started burning, literally, with the fire. The other co-meditators were shocked, really. What are you doing? It's a holy image, Gautam Buddha's image. You are setting fire and burning this beautiful image made of wood. We have been meditating on that. You are meditating on that for so many years. <laughs> what happened to you? Something wrong with you? <laughs> the man said, I am very cold. <laughs> I searched the firewood here and there. Nothing was available. Then I suddenly decided myself to set fire into this wooden image of Gautam Buddha. Is it not ridiculous to burn such a holy image? You know, he said, 
it's not needed anymore for me. <laughs> it's not needed for you. You have been using for so many years. Yeah, I used for so many years as, a obje as an object for my concentration and contemplation. Now I have passed from that state. <laughs> I surpassed that. I am promoted now into meditation. So the object for concentration, contemplation is not needed anymore. So I am setting fire. Moreover, I am very cold. <laughs> I think it's marvelous brilliancy. <laughs> this is what is meditation. He further explained to the co-meditators, his colleagues in the monastery, that now I realized what is really Buddha. I was also thinking before, the image is Buddha. Now I realize the image is not Buddha. <laughs> now only I realize what is real Buddha. Buddha is everywhere. According to him, it is true. I see Buddha everywhere, not only in this image particularly. My concentration helped me. My contemplation on this object helped me to transcend from one point into multi-point. I see Buddha in a multi-dimensional way inside me also. There is nobody else existing except my Buddha. This is what is meditation. Same, somebody else concentrating on some, something else, some other object, doesn't matter whether it is image is a Buddha image or somebody else image. Formula remains same. That is why so many gods and goddesses in India. I have never seen such an images in anywhere in the world. <laughs> in America, maximum yeah, image of Jesus, image of the, cr the cross, and the image of Mary maybe with the infant child. Maximum four or five images <laughs> put together. But when you come to India and see the images, God images, oh God. <laughs> Innumerable. And still people are creating new, new gods. Fusion gods, you know. <laughs> like fusion music. Why don't we create that image in this put together? Creating a new. It's good in a way, it's very bad in another way. Good in a way, these images can be used as an object of concentration and contemplation to go to meditation. It's a bridge. Every image is a bridge, a ladder. One cannot live in the ladder. <laughs> One has to cross. For that, these images may be helpful in the beginning of a seeker. It differs from person to person, no? There's no hard and fast rule. Everybody should like only one image. It's choice, personal choice. One can choose Ganesha, one can choose Lord Shiva, one can choose Jesus, one can choose Buddha. It's all liking, personal likings. Doesn't matter, but if one stays there, one lives in the ladder, then something wrong. <laughs> one has to see the image in which they make contemplation everywhere, inside and outside, both. That is the progress.
If a person worships Lord Krishna, after some time, he or she must see Lord Krishna everywhere, even in other religious gods. And the other day I saw somebody has sent a, a little clipping. I saw that. It was very beautiful. This side Jesus, that side Krishna, they are holding their hands each other, they are flying in the sky. <laughs> is an amazing picture, a combination. It indicates something. One can start with one image, but afterwards should be expanded to see everywhere, starting from earth to sky. This is what is meditation is all about. There is a result of meditation resulting in this way. If a person keep on sticking only concentration, 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 nothing else, the progress is stopped. No progress. It becomes dull affair. Life is not joyful. <laughs> It becomes a compulsion, <laughs> no compulsion. Liberation is expansion, multidimensionally. Meditation has the capacity to do this. Meditation is powerful. provided we follow the right meditation. Right meditation is not focusing on any particular thing. <laughs> that is what right meditation is all about. If we start focusing, it's not meditation, it is concentration. <laughs> Again, I say to you, concentration is not bad, but that's not the destiny. It's just a beginning. No clinging business there. <laughs> that is why in the beginning, real meditation seems to be very difficult, because focusing on nothing, <laughs> You have no scope to hold anything. <laughs> you are in the bias. <laughs> a fear comes because the ego always wants to cling with something. That's why the mind is supplying some holy thing to cling on. <laughs> a little satisfaction. Okay, I'm not clinging a bad thing. I'm clinging a holy thing. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I am saved now. <laughs> Take out everything. Don't concentrate. Don't contemplate. Don't focus on anything particular. <coughs> what will happen? The very beginning we talked, you know, if we take out the memories, the knowledge and the thoughts and the emotion, everything out, what is the net result? Joy. Peace. That joy, the oneness, that peace is called, is called God. <laughs> the object in front of us for concentration is image of God. Image of God can't be God. It's a door. Every image is a door to enter into the kingdom of God. Door means an entry. You can enter through the image of any God's image. It's an entrance. That's not the destination.
because God is formless. God is nameless too. When there is no form, where is a name? <laughs> How will you name it? All names are just for the forms. This is the final homework. <laughs> Take out the idea of name and form and experience after that. Because many people they think that after taking the name and form only a vacuum. <laughs> vacuum. Nothing. Oh, nothing is not a good idea. <laughs> we want something. <laughs> they forget to understand that nothing only carries everything. From the nothing only everything is emerging. All the names and forms are coming from the source of nothingness. That is the ultimate understanding and truth. That's why some people are not interested to move beyond the name and form. So much fear. There is nothing there. No interesting it seems. And nothing is, nothingness, what is the interest there? <laughs> we need something to enjoy by the five senses. Is five senses is the ultimate of everything? All the objective things are giving sensation for the five senses, that's all. One has to transcend the five senses also. that happens, the whole picture changes, their new life, experience, you may call it enlightenment, you may call it realization, you may call it nirvana, mukti, moksha, you call any name, that is the result of going beyond name and form. The last hindrance the last hindrance of realization is name and form. The last door. Open the door. Go beyond. Realization. That is realization. The great experience is waiting for Probably you can call it his ultimate experience. There is nothing more to be experienced beyond the name and form. Techniques or instruments to help to dilute the idea of doership. Techniques or instruments. to dilute ego. Techniques, meditation techniques or practices or sadhanas or helplines to create an atmosphere so that meditation happens.
Meditation is not doing. <laughs> Meditation is happening. When there is a doing, the doer is there. <laughs> How doership in meditation? Hence the techniques, the meditation techniques, practices, spiritual practices or sadhanas, they all paying, paving way, giving way, creating a beautiful atmosphere so that meditation exists. Preparing the ground for meditation are called techniques. There are many techniques in the world given by masters, gurus, spiritual teachers, guides, Meditation techniques based on breathing, based on body movement, based on five senses, based on sounds, based on vibrations, based on meaningless languages, based on emotions, There are many, many techniques. We must always remember they are not meditations. <laughs> they are tools to set the meditation. Techniques are meditation creators. <laughs> they create meditation. It's like an artist taking a brush, the paint and the canvas and doing many colors. The, the brush is not painting. <laughs> These are all instruments for him, for an artist to create a painting. Meditation is also the same. We may use breathing technique. That's not meditation. <laughs> Creating meditation, we are using breathing. That's all. This awareness is very important. I have seen people for 10 years, they are breathing. <laughs> when you ask, are you, yes, I am uh, daily, one hour I am meditating. <laughs> or they say, yeah, I am watching breathing for 15 years. <laughs> they are just tools, creators. They are all beautiful chances so that one can enjoy meditation. Because meditation is such an enjoyment. There is nothing to be compared for the joy of meditation. <laughs> now we are going to use a technique, just a breathing technique. Let us see how meditation is set. <laughs> mm -hmm.